we spent quite a bit of time today talking about um, transit and also what would happen on the streets in Walnut Hills. Uh, of course, the most exciting thing, as Maggie mentioned, was that you have a, you've done a one-way to two-way conversion, which usually people live around and we like to as many of as we can. Uh, it now means that you have the opportunity on um, uh, the, the streets that were converted to go, uh, right now you have uh, basically two lanes in each direction. Uh, there is a possibility you could go to one lane in each direction and add on-street parking there. We want to show you what that would look like. Um, <coughs> The advantage of that, as you'll see, is as these things begin to develop, you're going to need the parking that you can get from that. Uh, you have a 40-foot street there, so this is an option that you could use for this, which would basically give you parking on both sides, a travel lane in the middle. And in the very center, this gray thing here is called a safety strip or a flush median. Uh, you're already using these in your city, basically, it's a cobbled median that you could drive over if you needed to. Um, and it, what it does, the function of that is to keep the uh, motor vehicles basically slow because they're against the parked cars. If you needed, if you had a large truck coming through or for some reason you needed to go around a car that was parking and you needed to get over that median, you could do so. Uh, that makes the fire department happy because they know they're not constrained by the medians for instance, they get around them. Um, the bigger question was what would happen on uh, Gilbert because that's a very large, uh, uh, kind of fast road. It's sort of a chicken and an egg question uh, right now. A lot of the sections along Gilbert are kind of open. If you drive down them, they feel open and fast. And there aren't many buildings up to the street. Obviously, if this kind of thing came into play, that would change. And you'd have more of a really, you'd actually have a really nice main street there of a fairly high intensity. Again, you'd need more parking. So we wanted to try to give you some other options for uh, how to deal with that. Um, one would be to add more, uh, use reverse angle parking. You still have your same four lanes of capacity. Uh, you'd still have the parallel parking that you have today. Um, but you could add uh, reverse angle parking in this very urban section through here. Um, further down, we wouldn't see too many changes to that. One thing that might change uh, in some places, right now you have on-street parking, but you don't mark it in any way. It's not uh, marked on the street or anything like that. Uh, we would recommend you consider, uh, maybe not all over town, but in certainly in places like your business improvement district where you're going through this whole design exercise, consider marking those spaces because it really is a good way to let folks know that you can park there, uh, and the presence of those markings also helps the motorists realize that they don't have that entire lane with the travel, which, which helps slow them down. So those are the things that we're looking at in terms of uh, the thoroughfare section. Do you want to talk about the transit, or are you going to put that in your... Um, <coughs> did you fully explain the reverse angle parking, some of the benefits? You guys seen this before, reverse angle parking? All right, let me explain how this works. Uh, I know we talked about this a little bit the other night. Reverse angle parking is essentially the easy part. To get into it, it's the easy part of a parallel parking maneuver. You, know, you pull forward and you kind of back into it, and you're done. Okay, for reverse angle parking. You could, uh, most people are more familiar with head end angle parking, which we just pull straight in. There's some problems with head end angle parking. Um, when you get ready to pull out of the parking space, you can't see what you're backing into, which is a little unnerving uh, for the motors. If you're a bicyclist who happens to be uh, riding along behind a, a, a row of cars that are parked at an angle, uh, it's really unnerving because you don't know until you see the brake lights come on that they're backing up and it's really too late at that point to do anything about it. So uh, what we've been experimenting with in a lot of places over a number of years, a lot of cities have already done this, is this back end angle, reverse angle parking. Uh, it has several advantages. Uh, one being that the driver is now looking, if you're looking in the direction that you're pulling out, you can look down and see if anything's coming so you know that it's uh, safe to pull out. A bicyclist, similarly, you can see them, they can see you, they know what's going to happen. If you come up and look at this drawing carefully, you'll see that um, when the door is open on the car, they basically are shunting people getting out of the car back onto the street. So if you have little ones, they have two little boys at home, and you know, you open the doors, you unstrap them, you set them down, and, and they run off. So rather than run off into the street, uh, they're running back into the side. So it's really just a safer option in that aspect as well. You also have the opportunity to load your groceries or your shopping into the trunk of the car. Uh, Rick likes to tell the story in the South Carolina place where we did this. They do a lot of tailgating, and uh, they thought this was awesome. For the uh, this being Halloween, I was thinking about trunk or treat or something like that. 